Well, here we are, and I have one single knife today, but I should be having some more come in tomorrow. Uh, also, since I haven't really done this in a couple of months or something like that, uh, for new people to the channel, yes, from time to time I paint my fingernails. I got a video about it, and I'll link it down in the description. I'm not uh, a cross-dresser or anything like that. It mostly came from um, death metal and uh, goth music from uh, back in my youth and stuff like that. And I got really weak fingernails, and that was kind of a way to uh, deal with it. But uh, with that being said, I do think that this knife is going to be appropriate for my unboxing. And uh, we'll see why in a little bit. This is a Tucson knife. This is a TS332 and 14C28N. And... Here we go. And yeah, we can see by the uh, molding on the bubble wrap there that uh, this is a Weiss start knife. Alright, here we go. Nice and heavy. Jeez. Alright. <laughs> Step up in the packaging from what I've seen in the past. By the way, this, uh, this 332 here, the action on this thing Got so super sweet once I uh, tweaked that just a little bit. But, uh, okay, we have a uh, fairly nice sized microfiber cloth going on here. So that's kind of nice. And then we have the knife itself here. So, yeah, it's got a little bit of um, schmutz on it. Definitely uh, glad to see that rather than not see it on a knife. So there is that. Uh, this is the model number for it. It's the LK5029. And, uh, the reason why I chose that knife, wow. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is, uh, by the same designer here. Uh, D. Antimanov, or Antimanov D. I don't know. He, his name is, uh, spelled kind of, uh, the other way around on, uh, Instagram and everything like that. And this should be 14C 28 inch steel. This is a titanium button lock knife here. And we have uh, carbon fiber for the uh, scales going on here. And we have some uh, milling lines going on there too. So that's kind of neat. Now, the reason why I said uh, it's supposedly 14C 28N, and uh, I hope that this has been something that's uh, just long buried in their past, but... Uh, why you start um, uh, years ago? I think it was mostly in 2017, 2018 time frame. Uh, was either mislabeling or maybe their supplier was being um, uh, uh, insincere or whatever with, uh, with them. But uh, they did have some troubles with uh, mislabeled steels and stuff like that. But And this was mostly, I think, having to do with uh, D2 steel being... Um, or, yeah, steel labeled as D2 um, was actually uh, much closer to uh, HCR 13 or 14 MOV or something like that after doing some uh, independent tests and stuff like that. Um, I do hope all of that's behind them. But I'm also taking this knife with kind of a grain of salt. Um, you know, I can definitely, uh, tell once I actually get to, um, sharpening it and, um, actually doing some cut tests and stuff like that with it, whether or not it feels right on that, uh, you know, that 14C 28N, 154CM kind of, uh, frame of, uh, frame of reference there, or if it's, uh, any different, uh, hopefully we're going to go with, um, with the one where it's, uh, it's actually accurate. And this is not something I actually expected out of this, but uh, this guy seems to lock closed, uh, much like a uh, the Civivi Elementum button lock here. And looking at it, yeah, the thumb stud there isn't actually being used as a stop pin. We have a nice large stop pin back there. So... Either something's going wrong on this, or I'm not quite understanding exactly what the thumb stud is actually uh, used for in this particular model. Uh, by the way, this model actually does have a name for it. Uh, it's called the Revenant. Uh, that was something that I got from the uh, the designer himself. I think he uh, 
showed up on uh, one of my uh, earlier uh, first impressions video, I think for this one in particular. So uh, nice to know that it actually has a name going along with it. It definitely does, you know, uh, I mean, we got a fairly tight weave going on on the, uh, the carbon fiber there. I have no doubt that that is titanium. It's uh, becoming much uh, easier to uh, find companies who are actually doing a decent job with it these days. And um, yeah, from the weight on it, it is not steel. So that's, uh, that's definitely good. And uh, I haven't really seen any any kind of companies uh, worth their salt attempting to uh, do something crazy like uh, pass off aluminum as uh, titanium. So I don't really have any worries about uh, those things in particular there. It is a nice comfortable design, I will give it that. Uh, I can feel the pocket clip, but uh, hey, for a titanium milled pocket clip, you, it's about as deep carry as it's going to get. You know, you'll have uh, essentially just a little nubbin kind of coming out of the top there. So. Yeah, let's see what kind of edge we got going on here. Feels okay to decently sharp. I will definitely find that out in, um, in a little cut testing thing that I end up doing uh, for my new knives out of the box here. Uh, the plunge grind, well, I can definitely say that Jared Neve is not going to be happy with that. Uh, you can see uh, just by the reflections there um, that it uh, it has a, a very gradual one that probably comes up onto the blade a little bit. So if you are going to uh, end up sharpening that, um, it does extend down a little bit, but yeah, it's still possible to hit that on a stone or something like that. Create a smile or um, gouge out uh, a little portion of your stone or something like that. So not exactly the uh, the best thing in the world. Um, for the most part, uh, I would probably rather see just a very, very sharp um, uh, plunge grinds on uh, most pocket knives, uh, just because that is uh, the easiest way to avoid doing a lot of that sort of stuff. Uh, I have like, you know, the Spyderco Endura here. This is kind of what I'm talking about. I'm just straight down to the point. I'm not um, lazily doing that. But I can say from a standard finished uh, sort of look to it, um, a gradual plunge grind can be kind of attractive, uh, depending on the model. But, um, yeah, too many of them go very, very lazy to it uh, uh, to actually get past that plunge grind there. And uh, it will come out right behind the uh, the edge. This thing has thick blade stock. It was listed at uh, 4 millimeters, which, um, yeah, that's... Uh, that's Pretty darn thick. Uh, I actually have my uh, set of Calipalulus here, so uh, I will go ahead and give that a little looky loo. And yeah, it's basically four millimeters. It's going to be just a little bit less because this thing isn't um, exactly the uh, the most amazing at um, uh, measurement resolution, but yeah, it it's definitely four millimeters going on there. Uh, let's see. How about uh, the blade length on this guy? It's going to be one of those fun ones since that uh, thumb stud is basically right where I want to uh, read it. But I'll go right behind there. And I see we are basically right at 3.3 .3 inches for this guy here. And that's pretty much right from where I measured that's going to be the uh, the sharpened blade length on that thing too. Yeah, this thing has uh, some nice contouring going on here, which is uh, interesting. Uh, something that is interesting that I'm not super thrilled about seeing is uh, the pivot on this thing. Um, isn't Torx, isn't Phillips, isn't Flathead. It's uh, kind of a Y sort of thing. I haven't really seen that on uh, much else from uh, Y-Star, but I, I'm not super familiar with them. Uh, I do believe I should have a, a bit or something in my um, in my uh, crazy arsenal uh, that should be able to take care of that. Here's my iFixit kit. Yeah, somewhere in here I probably have some of these things. Uh, well, those are uh, four. I should have some... Uh, 
triway driver somewhere in here. I'll probably try and figure that out just a little bit later on when I go to uh, take this thing apart to uh, look at it on the inside and see if um, see if possibly it is supposed to uh, open rather than uh, lock closed there. But either way, still does feel like a decent quality piece. I do like the um, the satin finish that they got going on on the uh, the flats here, and we got um, well on the uh, the grind, and the uh, flats are nice and stone washed. This is a high saber grind. Comes down to a uh, it's decent behind the edge. It's not going to be a uh, laser beam, but hey, when you got four millimeter blade stock thickness, that's really hard to do, <laughs> unless you have just an an immensely tall blade like. Uh, Tucson's gotten uh, close to that on uh, a couple of their really, really thick behind the, uh, or th thick blade stock sort of things. But that's few and far between. But uh, hey, that's pretty interesting. So, alrighty, I should be back tomorrow, hopefully with uh, a few more knives that uh, should be delivered. So, catch you then. Well, I have just a couple of other things here now that I've uh, taken this uh, guy apart. Uh, a couple of interesting things. One, um, the uh, the button lock for it is not designed for you to uh, flick it open. It fully locks closed. Otherwise, you would see a bit of a uh, chamfering on the blade there to allow that to, uh, as you increase force pushing it out, uh, slowly push that plunge lock down and it doesn't so there's that uh and because the thumb studs in this particular case aren't uh really uh serving a purpose uh, as in i can't deploy with it necessarily unless i i don't know start it and then slow roll or something like that it's not acting as a stop pin i'll probably just take them off uh not super um useful in this uh, particular um thing the other thing here is uh this little white guy in here and this little block of uh i'm assuming nylon but uh some kind of uh, plastic there and uh it's just basically a little cylinder that sits in the back spacer it doesn't actually attach to either side of uh, of the liners it just sits in there at the same kind of thing that the uh the back spacer does and as you can see it's got a little nick on there uh it's specifically designed it looks like uh, because maybe somebody found it in, uh, production or something like that, or it was, um, discovered, uh, or, uh, designed for it or whatever. But, essentially, when that blade comes closed, it can, uh, come in contact with that. So I think that, uh, basically is there to, uh, prevent, uh, blade wrap against the titanium, so it's uh, it's basically a uh, little um, little crutch because uh, something wasn't designed quite right with the uh, the back spacer to the uh, the blade there that would uh, allow it to uh, accidentally uh, come in contact there. So uh, it is going to preserve your edge uh, a bit better. But that being said, it still does technically make contact with it. Um, and uh, as such, uh, let's see. Yeah, you can see just a little tiny bit of a uh, a roll going on there, right where that uh, patch would be. I don't, I don't even necessarily want to call that a roll, necessarily. Uh, just kind of a little visual artifact, I guess. Uh, something that could easily be stropped back. But, yeah, just kind of wanted to uh, point that out. Alright, let's get on with some more. And I'm back with three more knives. I do believe all of these are two sons. So might as well use a two son to open these guys up. This is the TS301 Lockdown. This was one of the original ones in 14C28N. I did the stone washing after the fact. It was a satin finish to begin with. Still, really nice uh, blade overall. And uh, I dyed the uh, the canvas my card of scales purple. Seemed to work out pretty well. I did that in the same batch that I tried to do um, some Kaisers, and uh, some of their micarta really resists dies. Well, okay, here we are. Start out with uh, this guy here. 
All right. And we have a fair amount of uh, pack and goop going on. So let's go ahead and wipe this off. Yep. Certainly thought this was going to be a Rahi design. Go ahead and check beforehand. Uh, yeah, the blade is nice and tucked up in there. So that's good. Flip this guy out. Okay, we got a recurve compound grind. Mercantanto drop point. It's it's got basically all the things except for uh <laughs> except for a Warren Cliff. It's basically everything else but that. Decent hollow grind going on here. Because of that, it is gonna be a high saber grind here. Very thick at the tip because it's uh well it's just a much thicker grind. Uh what I've had much more luck with with these guys in particular lately and so i should do for this one as well is for um this particular area here uh when reprofiling and sharpening and all that uh, i generally do that at uh, 17 degrees but up here needs to be 20 degrees at least uh, because they literally are that thick uh this one does taper down a little bit still quite strong up there also Kind of looks a little bit like I have a, uh, a bit of a burnt edge right there at the tip. That's not super great to see. It's just at the top though. But uh, yeah, it should be easy enough to uh, deal with. With um, all sorts of uh, sharpening and stuff like that. Kind of get rid of uh, that part that was probably sharpened uh, just a little bit too long uh, on... Uh, on a high-speed belt or something like that. They have a really acute plunge grind there, so that's kind of neat. And the blade sticks out just a little bit more than that uh, choil there. So that's kind of interesting. Looks like we got an in... Mm, I speak wrong. It's just really deep in there. We got a stop pin there. That happens uh, right there before the uh, flipper tab. And over to there. So it's not really affecting you uh, changing a sharpening choil pretty much too badly. Yeah, this is the 360. It's in D2 steel. Jimping basically right where I would want that sort of thing. Uh, we have a little bit of a fuller in here. Kind of a uh, gradual thing uh, up to a, I don't know, kind of reminds me of a, uh, a comet or something like that. But it's really, really tucked in there, so unless you got uh, much smaller fingertips than I do, that's probably not going to happen for you if you're doing a reverse flick. Well, yeah, there we go with the first one. Let's see, what do we got here? Aha, uh -huh, this is a uh, reissue. This one is a fairly old design. I don't remember exactly the number on it. It's the 45. I've only seen these guys once or twice uh, in basically like large lots that uh, people were trying to get rid of in the past. But when they uh, decided to uh, reissue these guys here rather recently, they're still available as far as I can see, uh, I was kind of happy. Different pivot than uh, I've seen on a whole lot of other stuff. So that's a little interesting. And, of course, uh, we have that, which, uh, you know, uh, adds to the look and everything like that, but uh, also helps with uh, weight relieving. We have a very subdued flipper tab on this guy that also uh, incants with the handle, so you really don't have much sticking out there uh, past that point, so that's cool. That seems to work all right. And then we have some uh, kind of file work going on up top there. You know, obviously it's uh, done with a machine. It's not uh, fully filed or something like that. But, uh, you know, it kind of acts a little bit like that. Up to that uh, fuller there on the blade. This is uh, certainly in D2 steel. I mean, it is an old one, which uh, that's what they were originally using. And this one has a pretty decent grind. It's not very thick behind that edge. So, pretty slicey. There we go. We got a uh, stop pin um, integrated into the handle rather than the blade. Nah, it's just a choice that people make. 
You can easily reverse flick that guy. So that's pretty good. And yeah, you, you can easily change that sharpening choil if you need, but uh, kind of looks like you probably won't need to. In this particular case, it ends way, way, way back here. Then you got a whole bunch up here that you can actually sharpen off without uh, really having too many problems. So yeah, hooray. This one's got a uh, lanyard hole sort of thing that uh, hangs off of the back. Uh, those generally aren't my favorite uh, because a lot of times I do like to do a, a pinch grip. But this one, because the handle is uh, so much full size, if I was to actually get that back in my palm where it would bother me, I'm way too far back on that blade. So, yeah, that doesn't really bother me either. Maybe not the absolute um, uh, king of comfort if you are doing it in a reverse grip because you still have that out there. But I suppose if you really do want or need to uh, remove that modification or whatever, eh, Dremel and uh, pretty easily do that. Uh, lock bar access, uh, it's basically flat there, but we do have those uh, scallops up there. We have a uh, detent ramp on here, uh, and uh, that happens rather early. So, yeah, this is a pretty nice early design job from uh, Night Morning. Pocket clip mounted or screwed in from the inside there. So, yeah, liking that a lot. Alrighty, and I believe this last one is a Wong. This is uh, micarta back here. Uh, looks to be more their um, canvas micarta, but uh, very much polished. So it looks uh, quite uniform. Oh, wait. I'm, this is probably G10. I don't remember exactly. Um, but yeah, it certainly does look that way. <laughs> uh, looks like to be a uh, front flipper exclusively here. Blade is decently tucked up in there, as you can uh, see from uh, some little detritus on the blade. I can just barely uh, make contact with it. And then, yeah, I don't know exactly what you want to call this sort of thing here. Um, it is basically in, uh, an Americanized kind of a Tonto blade here. Not compound grind, and very, very exaggerated with that tip there. Uh, that can make it uh, pretty easy if you want to use uh, this guy right here um, as a secondary point for doing things. However, I will say, unless you are very skilled and very careful with your sharpening, that will basically just end up being a, uh, <laughs> a bit of belly uh, later on down the line. So, uh, you know, your mileage is going to vary on that depending on um, uh, your sharpening skills and how much you actually uh, cherish that in particular there. Looks like um, we do have uh, the uh, the lock bar is just a little bit proud of the other liner here. And of course they are also scalloped there. Let's see. What is the, uh, the model number on this? 347. Okay. And yeah, this guy's fairly middle of the road is uh, behind the edge thickness there. Um, it's not uh, super, super crazy thin, but um, it is uh, certainly thinner than, uh, than this guy here. Yeah, by a decent margin too. Uh, so it should have some pretty nice slicing characteristics going on there. We do have a uh, detent ramp going on here. And that seems to be basically where it first engages there. Right before your thumb would end up hitting uh, the back there. So pretty decent job of um, getting over that. So that's nice. Uh, plunge grind uh, does end fairly squarely right there in the center of the, uh, of the little sharpening choil there. So that's nice. And it looks like the uh, stop pin on this guy is integrated into the blade. 
and hidden lanyard hole there. So we don't have any protrusions coming out the back like uh, this particular guy. Or a hole right through the handle like uh, what is fairly common in the knife industry and goes along with that one there. Yeah, I'm damn sure that's uh, that's G10. That's not my Carta. And that's perfectly fine. Yeah, fairly nice there. Uh, it does scoop down quite a bit there. Um, and I have to say that's quite comfortable for me. The jimping is a little bit far back. I suppose I could do that, but then I have to uh, put backward pressure on that uh, kind of little finger area there. Uh, but it seems to be rather comfortable, but that does kind of make it a little bit more difficult for um, additional grips. And of course, the pinch grip's probably not super terrible, but that is a little bit pointy where my uh, index finger wants to uh, grip onto that. So probably not the absolute best for that one in particular. A reverse grip there with the, uh, the pinky in there. Uh, yeah, that feels pretty nice. I don't really have any troubles necessarily with that. Maybe just a little pointy up here towards the uh, uh, little hidden lanyard area. But hey, I rarely use a uh, reverse grip on it. Uh, yeah, your nice pairing grip. That works out super, super nice on this guy. And uh, yeah, this is absolutely a straight back. So uh, no drop point or anything like that. So this tip here, which, yeah, it is fairly thick up there and nice and reinforced. Um, is going to definitely be more designed for a poke rather than a utility cuts. It's way far away from you with it uh, being a uh, a uh, straight back uh, knife and all of that stuff. Anyway, but hey, at least you have that secondary one in case you do want to uh, do a little bit more utility with it. Uh, pretty interesting design. And, uh, you know, Wong does do some uh, interesting things from time to time that are a little out of the norm. But uh, more often than not, uh, they land. I can't say that's exactly my absolute favorite design uh, in the known universe, but most things aren't, and uh, eh. still liking that. Fairly attractive design as well. Different finish on the titanium going on here. I don't know if this is using their, um, their gray coating that they've done on a couple of things, uh, including some blades recently. Uh, kind of feels that way, but uh, yeah, much less, um, you know, the standard titanium bead blast kind of finish. Uh, a little bit smoother. Yeah, interesting. But okay, there's the, uh, the TS-347. And the TS-45. And the TS-360. All of which are uh, titanium with D2 steel, because, uh, well, that's basically two sons MO recently. But, uh, all right, well, there we go. I suppose I should do some uh, sharp, or, uh, yeah, sharpness tests on these guys, but that'll be in the companion video alongside this one. So, catch you soon. I do have some, uh, some new Civibis coming fairly soon. Well, here we are. This took a little bit longer to get here than uh, I originally thought. Probably because I ordered this via USPS, but uh, White Mountain decided to uh, ship all of their uh, their new uh, Civivian Wii's in uh, UPS. And, well, that had a little bit of problems. You know, they are um, kind of maybe uh, striking and whatnot. And this uh, also did uh, hit up a little bit of a uh, train problem, which was also, um, you know, rumored to at least uh, have some sort of... Uh, striking or whatnot but i think that one's been a little bit more relegated or uh mitigated that's the word i'm looking for uh but yes i do have let's see four of these little guys in here good i do have all of them oh, and we're gonna have a bag on the top of them i don't really think that's necessary for uh packaging but uh i don't know maybe i'm incorrect about that Let's see, so this isn't going to be an absolute fancy, fancy wee knife, but 
It was still one that I uh, felt I should pick up anyway. Go, we got all their standard stuff. Blah, blah, blah. And in the pouch. Get this guy. Okay, so this is the, uh, the banter. This one is in the, uh, Whatever kind of carbon fiber that they actually ended up making this out of. Uh, shredded carbon fiber, looks like. But, uh, yeah, so there we go. But this thing had a uh, finger troil on it. Hmm, maybe it's just the, uh, the small ones. I don't know. Either way, yep, this is a knife by Ben Banters. This has got uh, a 35VN steel on it. Fairly similar to um, the uh, TS-349 that I had actually just recently looked at. Same kind of uh, dimensions and things like that. This is the QSB Parrot and the Denim Micarta. That's just what I use to uh, open everything up with. Uh, let's see. Are they actually going to tell me on the box? Yeah, sure. So, to go along with that, I have a uh, Baby Banter. Which is uh, Svibi rather than we. So they are going to be a little bit different. This one's uh, much smaller. Yep, there we are. But this is the, uh, the Mike Carter guy. Ooh, it is real tiny. Yep, it's still got that choil there. So you still have about the same kind of grip going on there. Choil's not too bad. Maybe just a little tiny bit small for uh, me to feel super, super comfortable with it. But that's okay. Most of them have been G10 thus far. Let's see, yeah, Nitro V blade steel on this guy. Obviously, that blade steel is going to be. Um, I don't know exactly where my mind was going with that, but uh, yeah, it's not a whole lot of it, and then this is just kind of a uh, standard uh, blasted finish. Which, uh, hey, for stainless steels, that's not all that bad. Um, you do kind of run into uh, some kind of um, corrosion risk uh, when you end up uh, doing that kind of finish on something like D2 though and alrighty and then these are going to be my new Sabibis the new ones from the recent set yep, all these boxes have a little pack of snacks to go along with them Alrighty, uh, let's see, does that actually say on the blade? No, it doesn't. But it will here. Okay, this is the Voltaic. And uh, yeah, this is uh, definitely a steel sort of thing, which made me kind of um, shy away from them uh, to begin with. Just because steel itself these days seems like it's mostly relegated to some... Um, cheaper designs and stuff like that, but it doesn't seem all right. This has their same Quiborcia wood, which uh, I have been uh, enjoying quite a bit recently. I got some nice figuring and everything going on going on with this one here. We have uh, the open thing here. That's going to mean that um, we do have, yeah, blade pin is uh, inset into the handle though. Um, still, uh, I've mentioned this before, not exactly my favorite thing because it just makes a very large area for stuff to be able to get in there and schmutz up the um, uh, the bearings and everything in there. These guys are in uh, 14C28N, which, uh, hey, at least to um, my experience, uh, seems to work uh, about the same as their, um, their Nitro V. Kind of seems like they uh, trade off here and there, probably... Um, Part of that is uh, just due to a supply chain when you're a larger manufacturer. Sometimes it's uh, harder to get a hold of uh, gigantic amounts of uh, some of that stuff. But, uh, yeah, pretty neat. They do a pretty good job on the uh, little sharpening choil there. Uh, I wouldn't really sneak up top there, but uh, I suppose somebody probably could. And uh, I do like that it's uh, at least a nested frame lock, so it's uh, it's easier to pull off some uh, different 
deployment mechanisms. And it's got that, um, what I like to call a match stick uh, style fuller going on there. It makes it really nice and easy to uh, deploy the thing. This guy has a fairly large blade. It's going to be a full size sort of sort of affair here. Yeah, just a hair under uh, three and a half inches. Decent action on it for um, for both the uh, the liners and the blade to uh, have coating on there. So that's pretty good. I like that. And it feels nice and thin behind the edge. Maybe not the thinnest that uh, Civivi's ever done, but uh, yeah, very very nice and slicey nonetheless. Whoop. Alrighty, and one last one here. And this one is the Savant. Okay. This one I also got in wood. Why? Because this uh this is pretty good stuff. It's a nice hardwood, so that I don't really have to worry so much about uh, doing stabilization on it. Got some uh, darker bits of uh, figuring going on in the wood there, but yeah, they all feel nice and the same. Alright, this one I think was also 14C, 28N. Oh, it's way up there. Yeah. Okay. Real small type going on there. Action not quite as good on this one. Uh, but I do think a little bit has to do with, well, this blade is just going to be heavier. As it's, you know, it's a taller blade. So it's got to have uh, more material going on there. Blade stock thickness looks about the same. I'm thinking it's probably right around three millimeters because that's what uh, Savivi likes to do on a lot of that stuff. Glad that they at least did some figuring uh, on the uh, lock bar reliefs since, uh, you know, that's uh, facing that way instead of, um, you know, facing internally. Either way works. And just uh, looks a little bit better than just that uh, square cutout that uh, seems to be on uh, everything. Because it's the easiest thing to uh, uh, end up implementing. But yeah, it's uh, fairly neat. This one, I wasn't quite sure. And it's probably not going to be uh, a favorite over the uh, the Voltaic here. But it is still a nice, um, nice thin CEO style uh, of blade for, you know getting in there and opening up letters and all that other sorts of crap that I think um, a lot of uh, CEO style uh, blades uh, I wouldn't really call it gentlemanly because well that, that has different connotations overall I think but um, yeah pretty neat nonetheless also really really good uh, we have a uh, pretty sharp plunge grind going on there and a whole bunch of uh little choil up front there, I guess. Like if you were one who was predisposed to be sneaking up on the blade or something like that, you could do that. Uh, it's certainly in my prerogative for the most part. Uh, I mean, if I really want to sneak up there, I'm going to do a pinch grip and uh, just use the, uh, the top half of the blade. So there's that. But uh, yeah, I think uh, both of these guys, um, if I remember right, uh, probably also come in uh, G10 and different micarta scales. Uh, which is alright, uh, and this one is micarta, um, and it's basically going to be about the same canvas style micarta here. This one has a little bit more texture, uh, maybe, than some of their others do, but, um, yeah, this one still does have that, uh, feel of, um, kind of dried Play-Doh. Not exactly the absolute best texture that I can uh, expect from micarta, but it's what Civivi ends up offering for the most of their stuff. I have that on their, uh, Oh, their button lock. Um, well, I do have one. Uh, <laughs> I might as well just look. Let's see. This one's just a little bit different. The, uh, the that guy. <laughs> the conspirator. There we go. But, uh, yeah, a little bit more like um, this guy. This is the button lock elementum. And 
oh, that's the sign cut, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's basically the same my card that they end up using. So, alrighty. Well, I have some new knives that I need to uh, play around with and uh, possibly sharpen up and all that sort of good stuff. So, yeah, uh, I suppose I was quiet there for a second. Uh, I'll probably just throw these, these guys up here. I don't think I have anything else worth waiting for. I could be wrong, though. You'll probably notice by the uh, the time um, <laughs> on the video there whether or not there's something else after this. So, yeah, as always, I appreciate y'all for watching. Have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo. And subscribe. <laughs> so, as you can see by the uh, the length of the video, I have one more, one that uh, came today, which was uh, the day after all of the uh, the Wii and Civivi guys. I think this is a six leaf. I think. All right, I was correct. So yeah, I got this guy off of uh, eBay because there's one or two uh, companies who are uh, throwing them up for auction or whatever. So, yeah, this is the, uh, what, the SL-19? A little smaller than I thought. Uh, what does make this one a little bit more expensive is uh, the S35VN that they, uh, they end up using in this guy. Boy, that is, uh, <laughs> it's a little bit smaller than I thought. It's, um, yeah, right in between the, uh, the banter and the mini banter, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, this thing is uh, supposed to have um, titanium scales on it. They are black coated, so I don't know exactly. Well, I, I I highly doubt they're gonna lie about anything like that because they haven't uh, yet, and uh, they've obviously um, released some other titanium models, such as well, it's pretty hard to argue with one that has the lightning strike anodization going on there. Uh, oh, and I guess the. Uh, the SL04, which is a really, really weird one. <laughs> so, yeah, then I don't have any doubts about it. Looks like this is a kind of a top flipper. Like, you can definitely do that sort of guy with it. But, uh, looks like, uh, yeah, also because this is a titanium scale uh, liner lock, it's super easy to do the, uh, the. I really hate calling it the reach around, but hey, I suppose that's what it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, interesting. It's got that uh, kind of bellyful point going on there. Wow, that's actually super thin feeling behind the edge there. It does look like it has a fairly high edge angle, though. You know, I'll usually do pull them back to uh, 15 degrees like this guy is here. I did uh, nick the um, thumb studs on both sides on this guy, but uh, hey, it's basically fused together there. It's definitely got um, a permanent Loctite and there was nothing I could do to make it move. So I was like, you know what? Screw it. <laughs> I want that edge angle on there. And this thing is ridiculous. It took a really, really nice edge. Uh, really easy to sharpen for uh, even for S35 VN, so that's kind of interesting. But you know, as I've noticed in the past, it doesn't necessarily have to be the uh, the absolute hardest thing in the world for the uh, the steel to actually work super super well. But uh, yeah, we do have a uh, billboarding like a mafaka going on up here. Looks like um, the pocket clip has a lot of pressure going on. Yeah, that's. Uh, I might want to try to bend that a bit to uh, get some more um, wiggle room on that because this thing's going to be next to impossible to actually shove into a pocket. But uh, yeah, it's not necessarily the end of the world or anything like that. And uh, yeah, it's got uh, the hole there. Um, it still does kind of fall victim to uh, their... They're basically, uh, they like to do this um, bead blast or sand blast finish on everything. And uh, because of that, uh, yeah, some of them don't have the uh, the best action out of the box, as you can hear. Here, let me put it up to the mic. Yeah, there's a lot of friction going on there. And some of that can probably be helped by uh, some... Uh, 
uh, lubrication of some sort. Uh, generally, uh, I do find that the uh, the heavy uh, heavier oils like KPL heavy or something like that does help a little bit more with uh, putting it on the liner there. But yeah, a lot of nice um, deployment options going on with it. I like that. Plunge grind is okay. I probably won't hit that at all when I'm uh, doing some sharpening, but I suppose we'll see. But, um, yeah, I did think this thing was a little bit larger, but, uh, hey, well, what are you going to do? I don't quite understand the whole metric system, so when I see those numbers, I'm like, yeah, I think I understand. And I apparently don't sometimes. That's all right. At least it's a surprise, and I uh, end up finding things out, and it's usually not a negative uh, in the end there, but... Yeah, pretty interesting. And because it's got that uh, fuller there, well... Yeah, it doesn't have the strongest detent on it, and that's probably because it also has the uh, front flipper capabilities. You don't really want something with a massive, crisp uh, detent like something like this guy here. Um if you're trying to do a front flipper because that just doesn't end up happening but that does uh end up making the uh the back flipper maybe kind of one of my least favorite ways to deploy this thing you know obviously the uh the spidey flick and stuff like that is probably good and that's also quite nice but yeah interesting so like i said i got this thing on uh, ebay for uh like 72 bucks but i do think they are selling uh retail via Amazon and White Mountain Knives and, oh, probably uh, AliExpress or whatever for, uh, I think, like 95 bucks or something like that, which I thought was a little expensive, but for 72 sure, I'll give it a shot. Uh, it does seem to me, so far, after doing some uh, testing on uh, other companies, S35VN, that uh, that steel doesn't seem to have uh, quite the, the crazy complications and uh, miss haps that can happen with uh like m390 and s90v um you know there's definitely some betters and some worses in the ones that i've tested but they're all right around in that same area and that's you know gone between um uh, american and chinese uh manufacturing and stuff like that between uh concept and uh Artisan cutlery and spider co and some others and stuff like that and uh yeah it all seems to uh be roughly the same so in that particular way i don't really worry too much about um this thing doing all that bad it is going to be middle of the road it's not you know the um absolute craziest newest thing out there but you know it's uh it's a tried and true proven steel so yeah that and it's nice to actually see something besides d2 come out from uh, some of these companies here uh, but yeah, today I did, uh, order a couple of knives that, uh, should be coming, but it'll be in the next video. I guess spoilers, uh, I got, um, let's see, Knife Center has an exclusive version of the Penguin in G10, but has S35 VN steel, and it was like 65 bucks, so I was like, alright. You know, I mean, the normal one does, uh, or at least used to go for about 28 bucks, so it is still a step up, but sure, why not, I'll give it a shot. And, uh, geez, there was another one, and I already forgot what it was. Well, crap. All right, well, that's basically, uh, what I had here. It was just, uh, this little guy. So I will do my, uh, sharpness testing over there, and then, uh, probably go ahead and, uh, try and put my, uh, my normal edge on this thing as well. I got three of the four of the, uh, the Wee and Savibis done. I just had the Savant left. So, yeah, this will keep me busy as well. So, alrighty. Catch y'all later. I appreciate y'all for watching. And have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo. Slam it up, scrap, scrap.